we know our planet is round and we're really familiar with the surface, but what's going on on the inside? What would happen if we just started digging down into the earth and didn't stop until we reached the center? Let's find out together in this episode all about Earth's layers. Have you ever wondered what's in the middle of this, this, or this? Figuring out what is inside of these items is relatively easy and just requires some force. But we can't exactly karate chop the planet to see what's inside. So how do we know what's below the surface of the Earth? Once the majority of the world accepted that the Earth was indeed round and not flat several centuries ago, the most common theory was that the Earth was just made of the same stuff we see here at the surface, just uniform rock throughout. Then Sir Isaac Newton came to a different conclusion. He had been studying our planetary system and calculated that the inside of the Earth must be made of material that is much denser than the rock here on the surface. Then, in the early 1900s, scientists discovered that information gathered from earthquakes could actually give them a peak deep beneath the Earth's surface. They used the behavior of seismic waves as they traveled through the Earth to infer that there are temperature, density, and composition changes on the way to the center. How we believe the Earth was formed supports these findings. When the Earth was taking shape, it wasn't yet the organized blue sphere that we all know and love. It was a chaotic mess, like all of the random things I'm about to place inside this jar. Eventually, after a lot of time and pressure, things begin to settle based on their density. This means that the materials in the molten soup that rose to the top were less dense, and the more dense materials went more towards the center. Here in our example, the more dense materials settled here at the bottom, and the least dense materials are here at the very top. Because the Earth is a sphere, the force of gravity acting on all of these materials isn't just down as we think of it standing here on the surface. The force is actually in, which means that the most dense materials can be found in the center and the least dense materials can be found on the surface, which includes all of the gases in our atmosphere. We'll save that for another episode. Have we drilled to the very center of the Earth to observe all of these layers with our own human eyes? No. But data collected and inferences made based on physics and other things that we know to be true lead us to believe that this is what the Earth would look like if we were to slice it in half, like all of those other things from earlier. We are going to discuss Earth's layers as they are categorized both chemically, their chemical composition, and mechanically, how they behave, what's a solid, a liquid, or in between. There's a link to this resource somewhere down there in the description. The basic layers of Earth are categorized by their chemical composition. The first and outermost layer is the crust. Think of the crust like the outer shell of the Earth, the layer that we all know and love. The crust is solid and the thinnest layer. Think of it like the shell of an egg. The crust is composed of eight major elements, oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. The crust is not uniform and can be broken down into two types of crust, oceanic crust and continental crust. The oceanic crust is thinner and only about five to 10 kilometers thick. Just to be clear, oceanic crust does not include the water resting on top of it, just the rocky bottom and below. The continental crust is thicker at about 10 to 70 kilometers thick and actually less dense than the oceanic crust. This difference in thickness and density of the two types of crust 
is why the Earth has continents and oceans. Don't get confused and mistake the crust for tectonic plates. The crust is the top part, but there's a lot more going on that we will come back to. The next layer begins just under the continental and oceanic crusts. We call this layer the mantle, and it reaches to about 2,900 kilometers deep, making it the biggest layer of the Earth by volume. The mantle is made of the same elements as the crust, but in different proportions. At the center of the Earth is the core, which is nearly twice as dense as the mantle. We believe this is because it's mainly metals like iron and nickel, very different from the rock of the mantle and crust. Here we have three distinct layers, the crust, mantle, and core. If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Now let's look at those same layers, but this time we are going to think more in terms of how they behave. Are they solid, liquid, or somewhere in between. We now know that the outermost rigid layer of the Earth is made up of the crust. There is continental and oceanic crust. The outermost part of the mantle here has a different composition, but is rigid as well. Earlier, we mentioned that the crust is merely the top of the tectonic plate. Together, the crust and this upper portion of the mantle form a rigid rock layer called the lithosphere that moves in unison. Depending on where you are on the surface of the Earth, the lithosphere can be between 10 to 200 kilometers thick. Tectonic plates are actually called lithospheric plates. As you continue toward the center of the Earth, the temperatures and pressures increase. This area has the same composition as the lithosphere, but it has heated up enough to become ductile or plastic-like and can flow and bend. It's not quite a liquid, but also not a solid. Think of it like this silly putty. When this substance is cool or cold, it's rigid and can even tear and break, but heat it up enough and it can move and bend. The asthenosphere is what those lithospheric plates are moving and shifting around on top of. It begins below the lithosphere and it ends at around 400 kilometers deep, mainly depending on temperature, which leads us to our next layer, the mesosphere. As we have consistently seen, the temperature and pressure increases the closer we get to the center of the earth. All of these layers of the mantle have the same makeup, they're comprised of the same materials. It's just the changing temperature and pressure that's causing them to behave differently. The pressure is so great in the mesosphere that there's nowhere for the molecules to move or slide. They are all squished together, resulting in a rigid solid rock layer that reaches 2,900 kilometers deep. We have now reached a layer with differing composition, the metallic core. Even though the pressure and temperatures are even greater at this level, because of the compositional change, this outer core is liquid. This metallic liquid core, made of mainly nickel and iron, is convecting wildly and generates a magnetic field that protects the Earth from dangerous solar radiation. This layer extends to about 5,100 kilometers deep. The entire core, as far as we know, is made up of the same materials. The inner core is our last layer, right here in the center. The entire radius of the Earth is about 6,400 kilometers, so we've made it right to the middle. Like we've seen with the mantle, although the inner core is hotter than the outer core, there is also greater pressure squishing the atoms together, changing the material from liquid to a solid, dense ball of metal. So there you have it, Earth broken down into its chemical and mechanical layers. If you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next.